Good evening and welcome to the report with me, Jonathan Steele. Yemeni soldiers have been using water cannon to disperse large crowds as clashes between government forces and activists from the Houthi community continue to rock the capital, Sana'a. Let's take a look at this vid video report for more. Yemeni police have killed at least seven Shia Houthi activists in the capital, Sena'a, when they opened fire on hundreds attempting to storm the government's headquarters. Several hundred demonstrators were also rushed away from the site of confrontation in the bloodiest day of tense demonstrations that have gripped the Yemeni capital for weeks and now threaten to descend into outright conflict. <laughs> The fresh clashes erupted two days after police used tear gas and water cannons to break up a rally in front of the Interior Ministry, where 10 protesters had been injured. Yesterday, Abdul Malik al Houthi, who led the Shia military group, urged his supporters to stage mass rallies around the Prime Minister's office. The Yemeni authorities say police will exercise restraint to avoid further escalating the tensions, while the Houthi groups say their supporters will continue peaceful demonstrations in order to overthrow the government. At the beginning of this week, the government sacked the chief of security forces a day after the violent clashes erupted following the attempted dispersal of the sit-in that was blocking the road to Sena'a International Airport. Shia Houthi activists have been camping in Sena'a for nearly four weeks, demanding that the government step down and that there be a reinstatement of fuel subsidies. But officials say they have a sectarian agenda to carve out their own semi-independent state and gain a veto power in national politics. President Abd Rabu Mansour Hadi made an announcement last week that he will replace the government in order to end the crisis. He has also reduced the fuel price hike that triggered the mass protest in late July. But the Houthi group has rejected Hadi's initiative and insist on carrying out their protests. Well, I'm joined now in the studio by Alex MacDonald, a journalist at the Middle East Eye website. On Skype from Sana'a, we are joined by Belkis Willer, a Yemen and Kuwaiti researcher for Human Rights Watch. And on the line also from Sana'a, we're joined by Hakim al Masmari, editor of the Yemeni Post newspaper. Welcome to you all. Can I start with you, um, Mr. al Masmari? Why are the Houthis so turbulent at the moment? I mean, there was a national dialogue discussing constitutional reform. At that time, they seemed to be much more passive. So what's changed? Yes, there was a national dialogue, which the Houthis also participated in. But after the national dialogue, uh, they were basically uh, put aside. Uh, they, were not, they were not involved in the government. They were not involved in any of the government's um, uh, positions or posts within the government. So they were basically put aside. So they felt that they had uh, to uh, act as opposition because they had no chance to enter government. Uh, they expanded in territory, and today when they are powerful, they feel that they have enough power to force their views on the government rather than uh, through dialogue, since the, according to them, they feel that the, the NDC was, uh, its resolutions were not implemented. So um, they will escalate. They will try to... Uh, teach the government a lesson that us staying quiet does not mean we are weak, but it means that we gave you a chance to involve us in the, in, in the, in the decision-making, and when that did not happen or that was not enough, we changed our tone into uh, protest and at the same time using force, if needed, to get our demands met or get our, get our views uh, considered. Well, Belki, Willie, let me ask you, I mean, are the Houthi... Is the Houthi anger being shared by other groups in, in Yemeni society, or are people unwilling to join them in the street because of sectarian issues now? Well, in Yemen, there um, are a lot of different communities with different um, uh, complaints and grievances, including uh, the southern uh, opposition movement, including other tribes that have stood against the government and government reforms, and, and of course, the Houthis. 
Um, Houthis are made up of, of the Zaydi population, which amounts to between 35 and 48% uh, of Yemen's population in general. So, so the Houthis have, have members from that religious uh, branch of Shiaism, um, but of course not all Zaydis are part of the Houthi movement. Uh, I think within Sana'a, there are certain areas of the city that stand behind the Houthis, uh, particularly those areas where there are larger Zaydi populations. Um, and those are the people that we're seeing joining, joining the Houthi movement on the streets. But what about the southerners? I mean, there was a long period when, well, indeed, there is a still a sort of mini insurgency in the south, isn't there? People saying that we want even independence, some of them saying. Are, are they, they're not taking advantage of this, the government weakness and being on the back foot at the moment to push their demands, are they? Um, during, during the national dialogue, we saw certain moments in which the southern um, actors or the representatives of the southern movement uh, did make calls jointly with the Houthis, but since then we haven't seen that kind of unity among the two groups. And at the moment, this protest movement is really only um, the Houthi uh, movement, and the demands that the Houthis are making are specific to their standing at, at, the, at the political table. Well, Alex McDonald, let me come to you. I mean, are you surprised that the government has made as many concessions as it has already? I mean, in, in, off, I mean, the president offering to change the government, roll back the subsidies and all that, I mean... Well, um, I'm not particularly surprised. I mean, it, would, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, there is still supposedly this sort of transition phase in place now that's supposed to be uh, taking, taking place. And, 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 and I think it's, it's probably a relatively sincere gesture on the part of the government. Um, I think in terms of what the Houthis, uh, Houthis really would like to actually get out of this, I mean... The the issue around sort of subsidies, which obviously was a major sort of bread and butter issue that a lot of political actors are very keen to to sort of uh, you know, use to their advantage, uh, was was a, was a good bedrock for this, as well as as well as um, issues around you know, corruption in the government, which is there. The fact that there hasn't been a real implementation of the NDC, I mean that's true. The fact that the Hadi is still a, a fundamentally a, 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 a you know a, a, a a remnant of the old, of the old regime. You know, again, it's another country where a lot of the promises of the Arab, Arab Spring have not been put in, put into place. Uh, on the other hand, I, I think to some degree the Houthis are sort of trying to, uh, you know, there is a certain, I mean, I, this is, these are things, one, one angle that's been put in it, the Houthis are trying to uh, take advantage of what seems to be a very reasonably successful sort of uh, political uh, manoeuvre here, and I certainly, I think, are trying to stretch their possible uh, concessions they can get from the government and sort of go for, I mean, I don't want to call it a power grab because that's, that's probably putting it too fast at this stage anyway, but they're, they're certainly trying to escalate things to some degree. Um, they are playing off a lot of genuine and very authentic sort of concerns among mo many, all aspects, all, uh, all parts of the population, but the way that the, things are spiraling now, uh, I, I, I honestly don't see this being very peacefully resolved at the moment because I think this is coming, this is becoming for, for the Houthis almost like a, you know, they're, 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 you know, they're trying to bite off more, they can, more than they can chew to some degree, I think. Um, Hakim al Masmuri, I mean, do you, do you think there's a danger that this, this thing could turn into a kind of civil war in Sana'a? I mean, at the moment, the, it's a clash between the Houthis and the government, but could non-Houthi people in Sana'a start uh, taking action and, and turning it into a kind of uh, sectarian issue between different communities? First of all, a civil war is out, is out of the picture, uh, for sure. Uh, they will, they, there are strong chances of clashes happening, of um, uh, clashes happening here and there between different factions uh, 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 in Sana'a. But uh, if the government keeps the protest uh, w w with no blood, then that's where it's impossible to reach uh, um, any clashes. We are uh, we have been informed by um, um, uh, high sources in the government that there is uh, strong negotiations ongoing today on uh, reaching an agreement. So both sides know the strength of the other. So they are not willing to go very far in escalating this case into making it. Um, uh, sort of a civil war or so. So there are chances, but a very, very rare we would we expect a civil war to happen because each side is powerful and each side knows the strength of the other. This ensures that there is a far chance of any long-term clashes happening in Sana'a. Well, that, that's a very optimistic um, assessment, and, and let's hope it's true. But, I mean, on what basis 
do you think there could be a successful outcome to the negotiations? What, what, is, the, what is the government really willing to, to give and, and would the Houthis accept it? It's not about giving and accepting. It's about reaching a compromise where both sides, uh, it's, it's a win-win situation where both sides get um, um, their demands met. But in, in, in a way, like for example, the Houthis could accept that uh, the price is, the uh, uh, petrol uh, remains how it is. You know, but at the same time, a, a committee is formed where this committee um, has the authority to uh, to make the, these prices lower if this committee uh, um, sees that there, there is a possible way. So uh, both sides have agreed on the change of the government, so that's out of the picture. The only thing that they are discussing is that uh, the subsidies and the petrol prices, and they are finding solutions for that. And I have now reached 65% uh, sort of an agreement on both sides but again, it's Yemen, and if it could happen, it could uh, turn backwards or upside down at any given moment. And uh, Belkis Willi, I mean, do you, do you think uh, the one of the offers would be for some senior Houthi people to actually join the government uh, and take part in, in a sort of government of national unity? Would is is that a, a potential uh, outcome? Uh, absolutely, that is the demand of the Houthis. They want enough ministerial seats so that essentially they would have a veto of all government decisions. Um, there are, of course, certain people in, in the Yemeni community, either of Zaydi origin or through their political career, have shown that they are sympathetic to the Houthis, though not part of the Houthi movement. Um, these types of individuals could be more of an acceptable fit in terms of meeting the demands of the Houthis in, in changing a particular minister, and yet um, not causing a very uh, strong reaction against that candidacy uh, by the other political side. So I think uh, President Hadi will be looking very carefully at whom he could put in place that would satisfy their demands for, for more of, uh, of their sort of say in government, and at the same token, finding someone who, who is a bit of a middle ground. Now, of course, for many people in the outside world, uh, Yemen is thought of as the place for AQAP, Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, and uh, the US drone strikes and all that kind of thing. Is that uh, all sort of a sideshow compared to what's going on in Sana'a, or is AQAP trying to somehow uh, get involved or stir things up or provoke or whatever? I, I think the, the link comes in when one looks at 2011 and what's happened since the end of the uprising. Since the end of the uprising, the new government that came into power has been unable to govern the entirety of, uh, of Yemen's land. And in the context of that, both the Houthis have been able to take land from Saada south, and that is exactly why they've been able to reach Sana'a, something that they would not have been able to do prior to 2011. And at the same time, in, in the south, Al-Qaeda has been able to take significant amounts of, of, of land in, in, in different governorates because of the weakness of the government. Uh, Al-Qaeda continues to carry out strikes on, on military and security installations, uh, execute soldiers and security officers on, on a very regular basis. Um, and that has led to, to a military offensive that was launched by the government um, earlier this year to try and um, uh, stop Al-Qaeda's growth in that area. Al-Qaeda definitely is taking advantage of this uh, current chaos uh, in order to sort of expand their reach. OK, well, thank you for that. We're, we're going to go for a, a break now. But do join us again in the second half of the program when we'll be looking at more of today's top stories. So more on all that after the break. Do join us then.